The early 2000s were golden years that many of us will never forget. It was a time to remember, but many of us 2000 kids had many of the same experiences. I'm Didi Conway, and here are a few moments that every 2000 kid should remember. Going down a slide was always fun, but knowing that you could receive that static shot was terrifying as hell. You could play on the playground all day, but to conquer that fear of the shock made recess a whole lot better. I love the hell out of this thing, and I know a lot of two cat thousands kids probably remember it. Um, it made me feel like I had a real dog until it just kept doing the same shit over and over and wouldn't listen. Or when the batteries died. Hey, I'll be straight up with you about this one. If you watched this, it was because you was bored as hell. Like, bored out your mind. Or you really actually needed, you know, to know what or when something was coming on. But should you not catch it on that screen, then you have to wait on it all the way over again. I'm going to limb of saying that most schools in America had a book fair. I can't speak for it out of the country. So, um... I know that when this came around as a 2000s kid, you got excited whether you could afford some of the stuff or not. I could afford it, you know, and I was always excited. You go in there and you buy not one book, but you probably always buy some type of toy because I know that's what I did for sure. Like I got happy when this came around. Wouldn't buy one book, just toys. Once you scratch one of these, like back in the day, it's a wrap unless you do something like extreme or you have some type of, I guess, filler that you could put on it, some type of product. But usually I know for me, once that happened, yeah, it's a wrap. It might skip uh, if you have a, a CD, if you have a D DVD, it may just skip on your DVD, too. <laughs> and an album, it doesn't matter where it, what it was. It just felt like time stops sometimes. But. I mean, it wasn't all that bad because, like I said, you had remedies. But some people like me, like I didn't. Yeah, wasn't using Google like that. So in the early 2000s, most games, CDs, DVDs, um, they kind of came sh with shrink wrap package. So spending 10 to 15 minutes on getting the plastic off is very memorable. And it's some 2000 kids will remember because we hated that shit. You probably spent that much time getting the plastic off so you didn't have to go get the scissors. I'm I'm glad they stopped that shit. Going straight to the video game section, the minute that you enter Walmart, is something that many 2000s kids will never forget. Many of us went into Walmart strictly for that section. And when we got there, we probably stayed there the whole time. We didn't care about groceries unless it was junk food. It's probably the only reason I would leave that section. But I don't feel like Walmart truly became Walmart to me Until they got rid of it I feel like that's when I grew up Before that happened I didn't I didn't care about anything I didn't care about anything in the store I just wanted to go to the game section And I know many people felt the same way You could be literally looking up at their screen the whole time And leave with a crook in your neck Hurting bad as hell LimeWire and BearShare. I think it just kind of depends on, you know, who you are. But LimeWire and BearShare in the 2000s was tremendous for all of us. It was like your bootleg way of getting music. You might go for a Rick Ross song and Soldier Boy might pop up. Like, it was it was so many things that could happen on there. It's all type of illegal shit. All type of videos, all type. Same thing as BearShare. But the one thing they made sure to have was... The music, the videos, and all the things we wanted. Like, if you couldn't go see it in theaters, Bear Share LimeWire and LimeWire were probably some of the ways that many of us got what we wanted. Very much illegal as hell, but it was a fun experience. Color Hines, ketchup. I want to say, I know it was ketchup for sure. I'm not really sure about mustard and everything, but. Man, you put this on some food back then, like fries or a burger. It was like a unique way of switching things up for kids. Like <laughs> I, when I got it, I had the purple bottle, so I put it on everything. It made my mom sick. She hated it. She ended up throwing it out, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people other other a lot of other people had the same experience. 
It just makes me think of that episode when uh, SpongeBob had the, the pretty patties or whatever. That was, it, that like came to life for us with this one. I think that playing games on the phone back then was very interesting because we that games have elevated on the phone so much more, especially thanks to iPhone. Like they they up the game so much more. Apple's not playing, but when we played games like Snake or Tetris on something like a Nokia brick phone, that's something many of us will remember forever. I'll be real. Gateways were like good computers back then. But the only reason why we wanted them was for the cow box. Be real. Silly bands ruled the world if you was a kid back then, for sure. Like, they came in all, like, varieties of different shapes. When you take them off, they turn into the shape. Like, that was a big craze back then for us. Like, the amount of people wearing these back then was crazy. You either really liked these or you hated them. It was no in-between. The Live Strong band was much more worth than a, a silly band. And we all remember that. The Live Strong band was the first of the, I guess, you know, thicker type rubber band bands that had words on them. And it was from Lance Armstrong. Uh, he used to always win the Tour de France. And he was, I guess, riding while he had testicular cancer. But the Live Strong Band was one of those very popular b- brands that kind of was expensive, too. But it, that was the band that you want to have the most. Like, I remember when I came across it, I was just like, damn, like, I finally got one. And it was worth it, too, though. I guess till you got in trouble for cheating. Cell phone internet back then was not what it is now. Not even close. And it, it was expensive as hell. Like if you make a mistake and hit that internet button and your parents find out, like they probably went went crazy. They probably want the RKO you because of them data rates. For sure. The early two thousands brought a lot of different MP three players. Um they ruled and always had some type of different variety from cheap to expensive. But at some point two major hard hitters came up and that was the iPod and a Zoom. Like these were two that were major hard hitters and that everybody wanted. But it, eventually the iPod would just take over. I still want a Zoom to this day. I think back then we all yelled if we saw this cart roll in the room. Like once you see this cart rolled in the the classroom, you immediately know it. your teacher's not trying to do shit today. And when I say you watch it for the whole day. Yeah. Not just a couple of hours. If they pull the cart in the room, then it's a wrap. They don't really plan on teaching that class. And 2,000 kids rejoice when we saw this. This is one of the biggest nostalgic feel- feelings from back then for sure. I can't tell you where it came from or where people even bought it. But the carpet car carpet car mat like, was in every classroom and doctor's office in the late 90s and early 2000s they still might be in there today i think the early 2000s pimp my ride was a show that we all tuned into like it was something we tuned into every time you probably had your tv ready to watch this and you planned on watching every aspect of what's going on i mean pimp my ride will forever be goaded i used to love tuning in to see how they would turn each car into something differently Damn, it turned out to be fake, though, so that's not good, but I still watch it if it come on. 2000s kids everywhere probably play Windows pinball, or be it at home or be it at school, which many of us probably played it at school more so. But when you played it at home, it will have you occupied for hours. You may plan to get on the Internet, and what turns into you trying to get on a website may end with you looking up and you've played this game for two hours and 30 minutes and not realize it. And you probably never made it to that website. It seems like everyone had this alarm clock. Like this specific one, several people that I knew had this exact alarm clock. And when you see the picture of it, it always brings back some type of nostalgia. Tune to own on video on every, and DVD. VCR screen before they showed what movie was about to be out next probably one of the biggest pieces of nostalgia simply because as a kid 
you got just as hype for that and to see the movies that are coming out just as hype as you were to see the movie that you were currently supposed to be watching. Like you usually watch it at school or or the the VHS tape, tape comes out and you see that right before the movie. And then for you to know what's coming out next was just very nostalgic. It, it, it gives us and gave us a very nostalgic feeling. We just never thought that that would end. Yelling to your mom, I'm going outside, mom, feels very off now. Back then, we said this phrase and just knew that we needed to be home before dark. Outside was an adventure land with all of our friends where you could spend all day just roaming. I'm outside meant that you're, you were independent enough to be outside by yourself with your friends and your parents trust you. To be back in a timely manner or when you were just told to be back. I don't know if today's kids even go outside anymore. Growing up and going to school in the early 2000s, in some places where you went to school, they really treated you like their kids. Probably at the end of an era, paddles were one thing you didn't want to get sent to the office for. Hell, sometimes it wasn't even a paddle. Might be a teacher duct taping some tape to two thick-ass rulers and going to town on you. But... Like I said, back then, some schools really treated you like you were their kid. Paddling was nothing that you ever wanted to experience. Drinking out of the water holes during a long summer day as a kid was something that is very special and probably many of us, many of us have experienced. Like after a long, hard day of playing basketball or just being outside in general, sometimes drinking out of the water holes was more refreshing than just going in the house. Or, if you like my parents, they probably tell you, hey, you need to stop running in and out of my house. You either going to stay in or you going to stay out. Well, we can't get nothing from in the house, and we don't want to just stay in the house, so let's just use the water hose. Just run up the water bill. Going to your local rental store. Mine was Blockbuster. Like, going to your favorite rental spot store on a Friday night with a pizza, will always be memorable. Probably got an extra large piece of a two liter Coke or Pepsi. And the night was made. MSN or AOL Messenger was something that many of us experienced. It was a classic way of us keeping in touch with friends and just strange ass people you didn't know at all. And I know some of y'all logged off then back on so your crush could see the notification. Ice cream cups scream nostalgia. This screams recess, some type of school party that you won with your classmates because y'all had the most AR points. Like This was something that you probably wouldn't get all the time, but for some reason in the school setting, you always end up with it. 